Russia fired a missile at one of its own satellites, destroying it. Russia has now confirmed it did launch that missile, did blow up that satellite. We were recently informed of a satellite breakup and uh, need to have you guys uh, start reviewing the safe haven procedure. It's traveling at almost 10 times the speed of, say, firing a bullet. SpaceX has been building out Ukrainian capability for weeks amid an invasion by Russia. Now, each one of these three cores has nine M1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines overall. Altogether, those engines produce 5 million pounds of thrust. Musk sent a second shipment of Starlink terminals to Ukraine, generating grateful thank yous from senior Ukrainian government officials, including President Volodymyr Zelensky. But the tech billionaire recently warned that Starlink user terminals in Ukraine could be targeted by Russia and advised users to take precautions. Important warning, Starlink is the only non-Russian communication system still working in some parts of Ukraine, so the probability of being targeted is high. Please use with caution, Musk tweeted. When asked for specific advice, Musk said people in Ukraine should turn Starlink on only when it's needed, place the antenna as far away from people as possible, and place light camouflage over the antenna to avoid visual detection. A thin layer of spray paint would work if there are no metal particles in the paint, he wrote. One Twitter user asked Musk if Starlink could face a cyber attack from Russia similar to the one that affected Viasat satellite service. Musk responded, almost all Viasat Ukraine user terminals were rendered permanently unusable by a Russian cyber attack on day of the invasion, so yes. As previously reported, Ukraine Vice Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov asked Musk to activate Starlink in Ukraine shortly after Russia's invasion of the country disrupted internet service. Musk responded in the affirmative, and two days later, Fedorov tweeted a photo of a truck full of newly arrived Starlink terminals. It's not clear exactly how many Starlink terminals are available in Ukraine, but Fedorov tweeted to Musk, we will keep you posted as we roll out more Starlinks across the country. The help Musk is giving to Ukraine has gotten the Kremlin leader fuming to the bones, and SpaceX expects their machinery to be brought down any time by the Russian forces. Last week, Fedorov sent a tweet to Musk saying that Ukraine needs generators to keep Starlink and other services online due to Russian attacks on infrastructure. Musk initially recommended solar panels and a battery pack, and he followed up a day later to say that SpaceX is updating software to reduce peak power consumption so Starlink can be powered from a car cigarette lighter. The Tesla CEO also wrote that mobile roaming has been enabled, so the phased array antenna can maintain signal while on a moving vehicle. Starlink hasn't deployed any ground terminals in Ukraine, and the nearest one is reportedly in Wola Krabowska in Poland. Twitter user Oleg Kutkov confirmed that Starlink was working for him in Kiev and posted a speed test result showing a download rate of 137 megabits per second and upload speeds of 24 megabits per second. He also wrote that his top download speed was over 200 megabits per second for a while. Kutkov said that he bought his Starlink dish in December before the service was operating in Ukraine. After seeing Musk's tweet about Starlink being activated in Ukraine, Kutkov said he decided to try and connect to the service. Starlink is the company's growing network of private orbital satellites that aims to provide internet connections to anyone on the planet. The prototype satellites were launched into orbit in 2018, and the company has since deployed nearly 2,000 Starlink satellites into orbit across dozens of successful launches. The satellite-based service provides an alternative to land-based systems that can often be difficult to deploy in remote areas or are otherwise vulnerable to interruption by natural disaster or, in this case, war. And now, the multi-million dollar investment may go up in smoke. Russia, which recently blew up its own satellites, has already given a signal to Musk warning of dire consequences. In early November the past year, astronauts on board the International Space Station rushed to seek shelter. The near evacuation was not caused by an unpredictable space weather event or the millions of pieces of remains of existing space objects and rocket launches left there since the beginning of the space age. The lives of astronauts were temporarily threatened by a cloud of orbital debris, space junk, created by the testing of anti-satellite capabilities by Russia. What is not temporary is the threat that space debris will pose to the thousands of other functioning satellites that form the backbone of modern economies and societies. Russia blew up one of its own defunct satellites and, in the process, created over 1,500 pieces of trackable debris that will remain in orbit well into the 2040s. It's not clear how many pieces of untraceable debris have been created. 
For decades, major space-faring nations have tested a variety of weapons with the capability to destroy space objects and launch attacks on Earth from space. The latest kinetic weapons test has created not just debris in space, but also sent shockwaves around the world. That alone should send some chills down the spine of SpaceX and Elon Musk. The NATO Secretary General expressed that this reckless act will pose a threat to civilian activities and important space capabilities for basic infrastructure on Earth like communications, navigation, or the early warning of missile launches. Condemnations of this signal event were also echoed in France, the United Kingdom, and South Korea. Meanwhile, the US Space Command has been impressed by SpaceX's ability to provide internet access in war-torn parts of Ukraine, the head of the command told lawmakers on March the 8th. What we're seeing with Elon Musk and the Starlink capabilities is really showing us what a mega constellation or a proliferated architecture can provide in terms of redundancy and capability. General James Dickinson, commander of US Space Command, said during a hearing with the Senate Armed Services Committee. Dickinson's comments were in response to questions from Senator Tim Kaine, who noted that Starlink's ability to deliver communications from space over Ukraine is positive news and also an example of private actors in space entering into contested environments. With nearly 2,000 satellites in low Earth orbit, Starlink is by far the world's largest commercial satellite constellation. SpaceX has permission to launch 12,000 satellites and is seeking approval to deploy 30,000 more. SpaceX's president, Gwynne Shotwell, said on March the 7th that the company had been working for weeks to secure approval for Starlink services in Ukraine before a government minister tweeted a request to Elon Musk. Just recently, a top Russian space official said any cyber attacks on the country's satellites would be considered a cause for war, while denying that hackers had taken down a control center. The warning followed claims by a group of hackers that it shut down the satellite operations of Roscosmos, Russia's civilian space agency. While the claim had not been verified, it raises the prospect that the war in Ukraine could not only spill over Europe's borders, but also the global lifeline of military and civilian space systems orbiting the Earth, which national security officials have been warning are increasingly vulnerable to cyber attacks. The purported attack on Roscosmos definitely got the attention of leaders in Moscow when hackers asserted that they were able to interrupt access to satellites' images. As the Russian-Ukraine conflict enters its third week, the U.S. Senate has given final congressional approval to a $13.6 billion emergency package of military and humanitarian aid for besieged Ukraine and its European allies. Around half of the $13.6 billion measure is for arming and equipping Ukraine and the Pentagon's cost for sending U.S. troops to other Eastern European nations skittish about the warfare next door. Much of the rest included humanitarian and economic assistance, strengthening regional allies' defenses and protecting their energy supplies and cybersecurity needs. All in all, as Russia plans to attack SpaceX and Musk, their forces appeared to expand their offensive in Ukraine towards the end of the third week, striking new areas in the country's west, while President Vladimir Putin has approved the recruitment of volunteers from Syria and elsewhere to join the fight. The war has forced about 2.5 million people to flee Ukraine, as others seek refuge in basements, subway stations, and underground shelters. With Ukraine's continued resistance, Russia now plans to attack other countries who are supporting Kiev, and influential institutions like SpaceX won't be spared either. The world, however, is hoping for a ceasefire soon. Musk must be prepared for the worst. Lucky for him, he has already partnered with NATO in a move that could see him win against Russia. Click on this link to find out more. We'll be keeping tabs on the developments of Musk in Ukraine and the involvement of SpaceX, so be sure to subscribe so you get to watch all of them.